So for anybody who would have been across to the sister aisle, whether it be weekend gone, last weekend, you'll recognize that things are heating up in Tobago, lots of action, campaigning galore. As they gear up for the elections, THE elections come December 6th. As that Monday hits there in December, it's going to be action time in Tobago. Want to give us some perspective, and of course, to talk about nomination day. And, and it's it's always good to have um, Dr. Shane Mohammed on. We enjoy our conversation so much that even before the interview, we were having quite a good chat there during the break. Um, but we're going to shift gears now and, and take it into the realm of politics. And I always enjoy your counsel. So again. Um, Dr. Mohammed, welcome to the brew again. Great to see you. Good morning. Thank, thank, morning. Thank you for having me. Um, so it's a, you know, I really enjoy our first interview, and I really am pleased to be back again. Indeed, and when it comes to you know the uh, political maneuvers and and all the action, come <laughs> towards you for for that advice to give us the perspective. Now the reality is Tobago, it's it's alive. You know, things are happening, from what we understand, reports on the ground is that campaigning is going on. It's at fever pace within the restrictions, obviously, from Wednesday, I would imagine. Uh, they can go a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Nomination day, though, today. Today is the day where prospective candidates will now be confirmed. And once they're confirmed, it's full speed ahead come December 6th. For those always hearing about nomination day, explain to them that whole concept and what the nomination day process is about. Well, you know, Jason, you've been through nomination day, right? So you've yes. had the experience. And it's really a matter of when the legal documents, um, the official legal documents required by the EBC are filed. Um, it's when the deposit is, is placed. Um, it's when your, poor, your agents act on your behalf. The lawyers come into play. Um, you know, nomination day normally starts at around between 9 and 10 a.m. Uh, and by the afternoon time, it's over. But it's really about cementing and ensuring that the candidates um, are officially, the nominees are officially candidates as prescribed by the Representation of the People Act, and that all the documents that are required, um, all the legalities are checked um, by lawyers, they are. There are even some people that work with uh, duplicated documents to make sure that everything is in order because one mistake could end up in a candidate, a party, losing um, yeah. a possible candidate, right? Yes, very meticulous, very meticulous. I'll give you very, a joke. Very, very much so. I'll give you a joke, Dr. Mohammed. What people don't mention, and I want to take you back to my experience last year. So. You're going there, and chances are it's the first time you're going to see your opponent in person, face to face. And you have your support moving. Of course, the your political rival on that day will have their particular support moving. And as according to how the nominees will now become the official candidate, to me, manage that situation, it can make it into something that's really beautiful and magical, or it can make it into something divisive. Because sometimes the supporters ready yet, people on edge. And I remember when I saw uh, Saddam, I, 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 we, we did an embrace, we hugged each other, and we told each other all the best, and things kind of calmed down, because prior to that, it was talk pelting and thing, you know? Yeah. Talk does be pelting, boy, Dr. Mohammed. People's be moving. It'd be Fetch. very, it's, it's a very people, volatile, very ticklish situation, you know? It has to be, let me tell you, eh? Um, people, people actually feed off of the energy of the, the candidate. They take the lead from the candidates, and it is a matter of the candidates managing their teams prior to um, going to the to 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 the, to, to the nomination to, to be to, to to start the process to go into the registration office, and you know it is sometimes the best strategy. I'm sure you would have said to, to your to your supporters, and Saddam would have said to his supporters, listen. We're going there, we're going, it's, it's all of us are one people. Yes, we come from different political parties, we may share different political philosophies, but we're not going there to fight. This is a process. It is, as you rightfully say, it could be the most enjoyable, um, one of the most enjoyable experiences 
if well managed and if you know well coached and um, by the candidates and the political um, parties or it can become very volatile and yeah. you know it, it the, the volatility aspect of it is is what we seek to, to, to avoid because there's no need for it, really. Yeah, it's really no need for that, you know. Again, theater, it's you know, it's just theater because <laughs> I'm telling you, it's Tassa by music truck by yeah. by, by Congo drum. Um, I said a, I said a fun fair like so. Alberta, Alberta Pudin, good friend of mine. Uh, she went up for Pep. Um, yeah, great person. Yes. My That's good true. friend. I, I love Alberta, but on the day, what talk about screw face? <laughs> Ting pun. Everybody trying to adjust their position. It's it's amazing. But the thing is. More than what's happening outside with the supporters, the reality is nomination day, if something is done wrong on that paper, one can be disqualified. And once you're disqualified, it means literally yeah. the seat will go to the opponent. What are some of the fundamental errors that can be made to, to, to disqualify a candidate come nomination day? You need to actually, you see, that's why they go through. Um, you, you have the lawyers check. I mean, they are, I know there are some candidates the, while driving in, on the way to the registration office, lawyers are going through the documents, making sure names, simple things like profession, simple things like ensuring that um, the, the correct address, um, ID numbers, uh, you know, all of your, 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 your personal information is, your name is spelled properly um ensuring that there's mr and not doctor mr miss miss mrs um where you your your address your profession um you know it is it is going down in terms of um questions about um uh offenses and all of those things that you would have all the all the little boxes that you have to tick yeah. um you miss a box and that could cause you a problem eh? um signatures dates Mm -hmm. that all of those things is to ensure you know that some nominees might be so um excited or so nervous about the process that they forget to sign the form uh you know you get you forgot your, your agent uh, has to ensure that you sign your form and your agent sign the form and as that sort say, of thing as they say you have to dot your i's and cross your cross t's. The t's correct very let's much take, let's take it now to the th election so I would have had representatives from both parties, uh, PDP, PNM, on the program in the weeks prior. And coming up, obviously, we will accommodate for all the candidates, the PDP ID. candidates, the PNM candidates, and the independents, right? And, and the ID also, right? So one particular party said they're going with a grown campaign, a rootsman campaign. That's PDP, you know, door to door, sit down on our front step, sit down on our porch, have that conversation. Of course, PNM, they're known to go forward with the music truck and the music and the whoop and them come in and the excitement. Uh, what, what's the feedback you're getting on the ground across the Tobago as to what can truly impact and bring the voter out on December 6th? Because they're coming out again. And there could be that whole concept of voter weariness, like, oh my goodness, our next election. So what will really motivate our brothers and sisters in Tobago to come out? Which campaign you figure could indeed really break through this time around i i don't want to sound biased and i have to be very cautious because um as to how i how i frame this answer we have to take into consideration we have in some instances we have three main political parties there um i ask the chairman of the idea why it last week Monday when I hosted one of their programs I asked him I said but there are 15 seats but you are only contesting there are only 12 candidates why are you only contesting 12 candidates he said well you know between now and um on next week Monday anything can happen you can add we can we could possibly find or add three candidates and then I, I outrightly asked him I said are you on a grudge party against the, the, the people's national movement and he he said, no, we're not a grudge party. I said, well, you know, that's the, the, the feeling that Mrs. A Dr. Angus did not get her a space in the lineup in the first instance, and it caused friction between um, herself and um, Mrs. Davidson-Celestin. Um, and, and then there was a breakaway. 
Um, yeah. how she went, can you... she went independent the last time around. Because she went independent yeah. the last time around. Yeah. How yeah. do you then convince your people that, or your supporters, or the Tobagoians and the whole, that you are not a, a, a breakout, a breakthrough party, a, a, a grudge party? Now, when you listen to the idea, the idea has a lot of wonderful ideas but they have a lot of theoretical ideas. And the issue that I have with the idea is that they must be able to balance their, their uh, theoretical perspectives um, with, with the practicality of the thing and merge the two in a language where um, the average Tobagonian understands what exactly are the goals and objectives of the IDA if they do get control of the THG. And we have to take into consideration that with three political parties running and an independent, and we don't know how many in other independents, uh, two votes could make a difference in, in this election. That's yeah. one. Um, the PDP is very focused um, in terms of what their goals are. They are very focused in terms of they maintain that ground, that, that very strong ground campaign. The ground campaign is doing them very well. Um, they're very well organized um, when it comes to, 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 to getting themselves on the ground, talking with the people, talking, the, uh, having discussions about the issues. And I must give you know, credit to Mr. Farley Augustine. Um, who has the it's been a, there has been many attempts to sidetrack him and very a, a lot of attempts to distract him in terms of to get under his skin by making statements that well he's not the leader of the PDP um, it, at this point in time it doesn't matter but he made a very 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 profound statement um, is either last night or the night before. He said, give the PDP a chance, and if we don't do, if we don't do the job, then fire us. To give the PDP a chance, and if we don't do, start, um, if we don't meet your expectations, then fire us. It takes a lot of gusto for a man to tell you, um, especially a person leading a political uh, party in an election, that if after you give us the chance, we don't meet your expectations, then you have the right to fire us. That, 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 that says to me a lot about the, his intentions and the decency and integrity okay. of the individual. Back to the PNM. Yes. Um, the PNM has, yet yeah, you're right, the PNM is, has been about, um, you know, they, they've been vociferous, it's about the trucks, it's about, um, the, the platform speaking and that kind of thing. Lots of visuals, um, lots of visuals. A lot of visuals, yes. yes. A lot of visuals and that kind of But they, again, um, Jason, it's because it is expected that they would have that because the PNM is in power. They are going to have the greater um, amount, more money, more support. I mean, they have the, the upper edge in terms of financing, right? So obviously what we're seeing here on the screen is going to be um, but this is not going to win an election. What is going to win an election is what is discussed on the platform. And uh, there's too much Pekong that is being thrown towards the PNM, uh, the PDP from the PNM um, in terms of when you look at it from an issues perspective and when you talk about it from the perspective like, so for, for example, um, this thing about Watson Duke talking about um, people getting fired um, uh, and getting the gratuity and in the um, uh, the Grasha um, in Grasha payments uh, if he wins the election and the ten million dollars that that communities would get and his deputy leader Faith Israel had to come into the picture and explain to the people what exactly he meant because the PNM took uh, a statement and ran with it. In this election, uh, I will say this to Watson Duke and I will say this to the PNM and I will say this to the, the IDA. You have to be careful. You have to be cautious about what you say and how you say it 
because the people of Tobago are listening and they are listening attentively because a lot of them have made up their minds from last from January to now based on what they've seen in front of them in terms of the fact that the the failure of both political parties to work together the fact that the prime minister had to get involved the the fact that there was hope that with the prime minister getting involved and meeting with political the both political organizations that um, they would have been able to come together. In fact, I have information that, you know, he was quite pleased and uh, quite impressed with the solutions that were put forward by the PDP with the hope that they would have worked together um, in, in, the, in the gap that, le that was existing between the last election and the other, this election mm -hmm. that is coming up. And it didn't happen. So, you know, there's a lot of issues that they're talking about in Tobago. Agriculture is one of the main issues. Self-sufficiency, being able to um, feed yourself, um, putting, in, putting in place a proper in agriculture infra infrastructure, that's one. Talking about opportunities in the private sector in terms of investment and trade and you know, building a proper private sector and a, a more effective private sector in Tobago. Less dependency on the THA for employment. Yeah. Um, and what and I would say, what I would say, Doctor Mohammed, before we wrap things up, um, this, because you're going through the list of of, of issues there that that uh, definitely will impact every single citizen living on the sister island in Tobago. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, Trinidad and Tobago, because this impacts them directly will really be looking on come December 6th. And when it's all said and done and the dust is settled, I would love for us to have a conversation then to do a post-mortem and analyze the results and really give a particular perspective as to what the results on that day is seeing I about the political that, process. So let's, let's, put that, let's put that in place in advance immediately. I, I agree with you, and I will tell you this from, from the onset. Um, the, there's a lot of there's a lot that Trinidad can learn, a lot, of, a lot that Trinidad can go back to by looking at the Tobago politics. There's a lot that we could learn from them. Um, one of it is um, while they, there's the Pekong and while there's some, uh, I mean, obviously there's a, a level of division, but the division is not to the extent that it is in Trinidad that it is so disgusting and discouraging and, you know, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, Tobagoans realize that their neighbor is next door is is PNM. But if I need a a, a a a handful of salt, I could get it from a neighbor, right? And that there are family members that are contesting that are on different sides of the political divide, and we have to live together after. And there are schoolmates, especially the schoolmates aspect, people that have gone to school together. Uh, on a different divide, and that when the election is over, yeah. really and truly, they come back together as one. And I'm hoping that when the THA elections are over, whoever wins, um, you know, you know, Tr Tobago will. I am, I am still of the belief that Tobago is able to teach Trinidad how to do it right in terms of decency in politics. And with that, we make our exit, Dr. Shane Mohammed. Thanks a lot for coming on this morning. Let's Thank book you that for particular me. conversation for after the results. And all yes. the best until then. Take care, my friend. Yes, take care. Listen, Tobago is it's a whole different concept, a whole different mindset. And yeah, it's true. We can learn a lot from Tobago. And I'm really eager to see how things pan out come December 6th. Our coverage of the THA elections will be extensive. And I can tell you, I can tell you in advance that we will be indeed giving you a really up close, personal and truly in-depth analysis of that elections, the lead up to and the results and the discussions after. We take a break and come back with your birthday brew, something to think about and your social media handles. Stick around.